Pull, can just the top one. Yes, there you go. Yep, right there. Okay. Yep, very good. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, parking lot people. And uh, welcome to those of you on Facebook joining us live. Also, um, to those of you who will be joining us on YouTube later on in the week. We're so happy to have you. Um, so I don't have my vestments on quite yet because to this week I received this in the mail. <laughs> and I thought you would all want to see it because I know, you know. I'm going to rejoice. I'm just going to rejoice. And I'm sure next year you guys are going to be on top again. But uh, I, this year I'm celebrating. So I wanted to share it with you all. Also, um, we have a meeting 7 o'clock Tuesday. We have our CAB meeting. Also, today we, are join we have new members joining. There will come a point in the service where I will invite up the uh, new members and anyone wishing to join with us will join me up here. Uh, and uh, the cab at the end, anyone that's here in the sanctuary from cab will be coming down to join you as well, uh, or to uh, greet you as well. So, but they'll come, the new members will come at the beginning and then the cab people will come toward the end. Um, also, I have, uh, don't forget, please, because the uh, Cedar Advisory Board people will be, joint, will be uh, welcoming people on behalf of the congregation, but everybody, excuse me, has an opportunity to join together at, uh, right after the service for the fellowship hour. And I think Stacy Ellis and Tammy Boyer and some other folks are down there right now preparing that. Um, please don't miss that. You will come and join us for uh, a fellowship, time of fellowship and some delicious cake and it's a whole thing we have down there. Um, also I have some sad news. Uh, Marion Bastion was taken by ambulance early this morning to uh, St. Luke's in downtown. Um, I'll be her, um, it's her appendix and it needs to be removed, but she takes blood thinners, so they have to wait two days before they can do it, uh, 48 hours from her last dose. And so they're monitoring her, obviously she's there, and um, we're just going to be praying very hard that everything works out for the best for her, but uh, keep her in your prayers too. Also, Tammy uh, Boyer shared uh, some cl the people, close friends uh, of theirs. Jesse Eisenhard is their son's name, and he's in Lee, I believe she said Lehigh Valley Hospital, but with uh, a brain aneurysm. And it's not, he's not looking very good. He's a father of young children, so we're going to keep him in his, our prayers as well. Um, Anyone else today have anything great? Then I invite you to, oh, don't forget Wednesday evenings, you can still come. It's not too late, even if you haven't been there. We had a great turnout um, on when, this Wednesday, our best turnout so far. And, uh, you know, we can accommodate new people. It's really not a problem because we're talking about different segments of the Bible each and every week. So please come along. Soup. Yeah. David is reminding choir members to bring whatever you promise to bring uh, uh, for, you know, whether it was soup or bread or whatever uh, dessert, please bring that along. And we look forward to, to sharing in your delicious soup. On Wednesday evening, a couple of us were talking about uh, perhaps having a recipe exchange at the end because some of the soups have been fabulous and some, 
uh, there was a salad that just was phenomenal a couple of weeks ago. So um, anyway, come, it's delicious, and you'll enjoy it, and you'll learn something too. So yay for that. Um, and so now, uh, though, I invite you to join with me as we worship God Almighty, and I invite you to rise in body or spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. In today's gospel, the Samaritan woman asks Jesus for water, an image of our thirst for God. Jesus offers living water, a sign of God's grace flowing from the waters of baptism. The early church used this gospel and those of the next two Sundays to deepen baptismal reflection during the final days of preparation before baptism at Easter. As we journey to the resurrection feast, Christ comes among us in word, bath, and meal, offering us the life-giving water of God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us pray. God, 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 mercy. We come together from different places. Some of us arrive concerned, others muddled and fractured, and others somewhere between. We aren't sure what we will find wandering through this wilderness. 
we pray, we pray you will guide us, making room for all we are, and inviting us to be renewed. Help us to embrace your joy and find hope arising anew. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. O oh God, our prayers often falter when we think we need to get it all right with every word in its proper place, every sentiment correctly stated. Yet we know life is not like that. Our feelings wander, our thoughts scatter, our motivations are mixed. Save us from the politeness of faith that often shrinks back from the messy soul of what it means to be human. From these messy places, we find life-giving desires, longing to be felt and given voice. Save us, too, from a sterility of faith that, for the sake of precision, remains close to wonderment, the facing of hard questions and the possibilities of new adventures. In the deep and hospitable silence, enlarge our trust and free our hearts to live, to live the, the generous ways of your love. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. My friends, God's voice carries over the waters of creation, reaching out to you and assuring you that you are loved into life's fullness over and over again. You will drink of the living waters and never be thirsty again. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite forward all those wishing to join with Cedar Church. Just come right up here. Yay. Actually, I'm going to, yeah, let me come out here so you can look at me. And I mean, so they can look at your faces instead of, you know, the behinds of you. So, okay, Ron, I know, there you go. They are not, now, you all look so nice. Ah, and you guys have already been a part of us, but now you are making it official, becoming one as a member of Cedar Church. And so um, I'm just, I'm thrilled to pieces to have each and every one of you and your unique gifts and the things that you have been sharing with us and things that I know you will 
grow into uh, the gifts that you will share. Friends, each of these people have found a home here, has heard God call them beloved, and feels beloved by this congregation. Now they seek to deepen their relationship and their commitment to this church community. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the life journey that brought each of these to join our church today. We celebrate the unique impact they will make here and already have made here. Through their presence, gifts, and talents, may this congregation offer support in times of trouble and rejoice with them always. May our church home strengthen their faith and deepen their relationship. All this we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. Today we make a covenant with one another. We make promises to one another before God so that we can depend on each other through good and hard times. You have a church and a people. And so now we ask you, do you affirm your faith in God as your creator in Christ, as your inspiration, and then in the Holy Spirit as your strength? If so, please say, I do. I do. I like that. <laughs> there is no doubt about Tony. He is here. <laughs> do you promise to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to be a witness to the healing ministry and loving message of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please respond, I promise with the help of God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in faith and to be an active and joyful member of this church? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. And do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves its community? in the world? If so, please say, I promise with the God, help of God. I promise with the help of God. And now to the members of the church. Do you promise to help these brothers and sisters in Christ find their place in this body of Christ to pray with them and for them, to welcome them fully in holy friendship, to be angels for them in times of distress and servants to them in times of need? If so, please answer, we promise with the help of God. We promise with the help of God. I invite the members of the Cedar Advisory Board forward. And let us, the members of Cedar Church, express our welcome and affirm our ministry together. We joyfully welcome you into the common life of our church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share in the hopes and the labors of this church. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we in faith and be witnesses to the love of God and to the peace of Christ. And Cab, come on guys, Cab, come on down. I see them standing back there. Tell it, come on down. <laughs> Come on down. Okay. <laughs> and then, so I will say on behalf of all of us, and then they're going to shake all of your hands because, you know, it's an important thing. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of this family of God, we will extend to you the right hand of Christian love, welcoming you into the company and family of Cedar Church. Welcome, 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 I'm so happy. <laughs> and let's, uh, while the cab does this, let's give them a warm round of applause.
We thank God for you, and um, we have one final blessing to bestow upon you. Loving God, give to these your precious children strength for life's journey, courage in times of suffering, the comfort of faith, love that cannot die, laughter in the company of friends, and the hope of new life through Jesus Christ who makes us one. Amen. You guys may be seated. Thank you so much. And welcome again. We're so happy to have you. The reading of the Psalms is from Psalm 95. We must recognize God's greatness and God's authority over all of creation. Worship is a spontaneous reaction of praise. Music, noisiness, and actions are an inextricable part of worship. We can rejoice in creation, God's greatness, steadfastness, and in, fa and in the fact that we are a cherished part of that. In recognizing our place in God's world, we also bow down and kneel in humility. Come, let's shout praises to God. Raise the roof for the rock who saved us. Let's march into God's presence singing praises, lifting the rafters with our hands. And why? Because God is the best, high king over all the gods. In one hand, God holds deep caves and caverns. In the other hand, grabs the high mountains. God made ocean. God owns it. God's hand sculpted earth. So come, let us worship. Bow before God on your knees before God who made us. Oh yes, God is our God, and we're the people God pastures, the flock he feeds. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 5. Though we often hear that God helps those who help themselves, here Paul tells us that through Jesus' death, God helps utterly helpless sinners. Since we who had been enemies are reconciled to God in the cross, we now live in hope for our final salvation. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our, heart, into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely that we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Here in John 4, Jesus converses on equal terms with a Samaritan woman, symbolizing the breaking of a boundary between the people who were rejected and those who were chosen, and the new invitation to all to come and know God and worship in spirit and in truth. There's a big shift here from exclusion to inclusion as Jesus legitimizes a Samaritan. And the fact that that Samaritan is also a woman is really powerful. 
Jesus is the outsider here. He is the foreigner. And because he has no means to draw water, he relies on the mercy of the woman at the well. Listen to the Gospel of John, uh, to the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink? You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and whose sons and his flocks drank from it? And Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this living water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. And Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you are right in saying you have no husband. For you have had five husbands and the one you have now is not a husband. What you have said is true. And the woman said to him, sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say that the place where the people must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for the salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. And when he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just when his disciples came, they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? And they left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of God. 
the will of him who sent me, and to complete his works. Do you not say four months more, and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that for which you did not labor, and others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him and they asked to stay with them, he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. And they said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the good news. Grace to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This morning, we'll be, I'll be delivering the sermon from the steps. Imagine water flowing, right, out of the well. For those in, of you in your cars, I'm no longer Pastor Candy. I am the lady at the well, okay? I put on a blue scarf. That's how I'm doing it. Just... Okay. And again, let's pray. Font of every blessing, we come before you this morning, opening our parched places to receive the springs of living water you offer to us. Most of the time, God, we don't even know we're thirsty. We don't even know the deep dehydration that scours our bones and parches our hearts. Sometimes when our thirst pangs emerge, we draw from the enticing wells of the world's offering of power and profit, which leave us even more empty. Still us, God, so we might listen to you speaking to us, knowing us, seeing us, loving us. Fill us with your living water that will transform our spirits and our souls into springs that burst forth with life and love for your people, for ourselves, for the world. Amen. I'm a woman of no distinction, little importance. I'm a woman of no reputation, save that which is bad. You whisper as I pass by. You cast judgmental glances, though you don't really take the time ever to look at me or even to get to know me. For to be known is to be loved. 
and to be loved is to be known. Otherwise, what's the point in doing either one of them in the first place? I want to be known. I want someone to look at my face and not just see two eyes and a nose and a mouth and two ears, but to see all that I am and all that I could be. All my hopes, all my love, all my fears. But that's too much to hope for, too much to wish for, too much to pray for, so I don't, not anymore. Now I just keep to myself. And by that I mean the pain. It keeps me in my own private jail. The pain that's brought me here at midday in the heat of the noonday sun to this well. To ask for a drink, that's no big deal. No big request. But to ask it of me, a woman unclean, ashamed, used and abused, an outcast, an outsider, a failure, a disappointment, a sinner. No drink passing from these hands to your lips could ever be refreshing, just condemning, as I'm sure you condemn me now. But you don't. You're a man of no distinction, though of the utmost importance. A man with little reputation, at least so far. You whisper and tell me to my face what all those glances have been about. And you take the time to really look at me. But you don't need to know me. For to be known is to be loved, and to be loved is to be known. And you do know me. You actually know me, all of me, everything about me, every thought inside and a hair on top of my head. <sighs> every hurt stored up, every hope, every dread, my past and my future, all uh, I am, all I could be. You tell me everything you tell me about me and that which is spoken by another would bring hate and condemnation coming from you brings love and grace and mercy and hope and salvation I heard of one to come who could save a wretch like me and here in my presence you say I am he be known is to be loved, and to be loved is to be known. And I just met you, but I love you. I don't know you, but I want to get to know you. Let me run back to town. There's way too much for just me. There are others, brothers and sisters and lovers and haters, the good and the bad, the sinners and the saints. You should hear what you've told me. Who should hear what you've said? Who should see what you've shown me? Who should taste what you gave me? Who should feel how you forgave me? For to be known is to be loved, and to be loved is to be known. And they all need this too. We all do. We need it for our own. Amen. Let's be in the spirit of prayer. Oh my God, teach our hearts where and how to seek you, where and how to find you. For you are our God and you are our all, and we have never seen you. You made us and remade us. You bestowed upon us all the good things I possess. And still, I do not know you. I have not yet done that for which I was made. Teach me to seek you. I cannot seek you unless you teach me. 
or find me find you unless you show me yours to yourself Let me seek you in my desire. Let me desire you in my seeking. And let me find you by loving you. Let me love you when I find you. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for your church. Bless partnerships with other Christians and interreligious dialogue. Guide the daily work of denominational and congregational leaders. 
Strengthen our combined witness for the sake of the gospel that all experience your life-giving love. Merciful God, we pray for the universe, all creation teams with life, from the depths of the earth and seas to the skies above. Fill us, fill us with awe and reverence for the diversity and preservation of life. Merciful God, we pray for the nations of the world. Topple, with the, topple the dividing walls that separate us from our neighbors. Form us into your beloved community where diversity of gender, race, language, ability, and ethnic origin is celebrated and affirmed. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. We pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Be present with all who are lonely and give courage to all who are afraid. Comfort those who live with chronic illness or other sickness, especially Marion, Jesse, Mary, Connor, Cindy, Danelle, Barry, June, Bev and Richard, Gary, Susan, Denise, Joan, Dale, Ron, Rod, Kathleen, Jean, Christine, Amanda, Dick, Megan, Terry, Nancy, Dawn, Kim, Beverly, Linda, Scott, Debbie, Shirley, Pauline, Al and Joan, Hazley, Jean and Joan, Howard and Nancy, Nevin, Cassie, Darlene, Cindy, Barbara, Anna Mae, Brooke, Mabel, Ardella, members of our recovery groups and the Saffert family. Give them your living water always. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation. Nurture their faith and pour your love into their hearts. Bless those who have joined with us as new members this day. Inspire our community by their testimony to God's grace in their lives. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for the lives of all your saints, their hope in you sustained lives of faith and service. Encourage us with the hope they shared in you. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. we lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And I invite you to rise in body or spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are called, my friends, to hope and share this hope with the world. Let us offer thanks to, to God for all God has given us by sharing generously of ourselves and our resources. Through our gifts, may all experiences the, experience the hope to be found in our life-giving God. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, go on. Thank you. 
Let us pray. As one closer than our breathing, and as one knowing of our needs before we ask, bless the gifts we bring today, O God. Through us, use them in the love and service of others. Amen. We have come, we have encountered the living God through the love of the living Christ. We have been refreshed by the living water. Go now to live in the hope this encounter inspires. Be water bearers to a dry and parched world, knowing that the God of love and hope goes before you and with you always. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and have a prayer for uh, the, the blessing for the food downstairs so that uh, I can shake hands. I forgot to tell you during the announcements, uh, yeah, I fell, I took out the plant stand, uh, Ron fixed it for us, so it's just, it's perfectly fine and no one will ever know the, the nurse. Well, I, st I have a very interesting couple of bruises and the nurse said, asked me if I needed to have Craig removed from the room at one point. And I was like, no, that, was, that wasn't him. He was nowhere near me. That was a plant stand. <laughs> so, but I'm just, I, everything was checked out, and I'm just fine. So thank you all for your prayers and calls and everything all throughout the week. I really and truly appreciated it. Um, 
But now let's be in the spirit of prayer. Gracious God, we are so grateful for the new members who have joined with us this day. We are also grateful for these faithful people, those sons and daughters of yours at Cedar Church. We give thanks for each and every one of them, especially those who are here every single week to make sure that the church keeps going. Please help each one of them to be blessed by you and to continue to share their gifts with us. We ask that you use the food that's been prepared for us to bless our bodies and nourish them just as your love and our friendship and fellowship nourishes our souls and our hearts. And for that, we give you thanks. Amen. Go in peace, serve in love. Thank you. Thank you.